I'll be showing you how pros take banana control on Inferno CT side. I show over 7 different tactics from 7 pro teams. We'll go through these standard protocols to aggressive strategies. By the end of the video, you'll become the king of banana. The most standard banana take which you'll see in your premier games face it games is throwing 2 incendiaries, 1 behind half wall, 1 for deep, and then also a deep banana smoke. Now the issue with this is that you see that there's huge gaps in between the incendiaries one incendiary will no longer cover the log and broom site. The incendiary got an update and the spread was nerfed. Throughout the video, I'm going to show you ways to counter that. So in regards to the standard banana take, the first player is usually the one throwing the half wall Molotov to prevent the rush, as well as giving your teammates time to throw the other nades. Since the incendiary doesn't cover both sides, you can have your other teammate throw the deep Molotov more towards the broom side, and then you and your teammate can go ahead and double nade the log side or vice versa. You can go ahead and Molotov the right side and nade the left side. Once you have banana control, you'll often see in the pro scene that one B player is going to rotate towards A, stacking for A, leaving one towards B playing by themselves. The solo banana player typically plays more passive, jump spotting from top banana or jiggle peeking, which I'll show later. Pros are often throwing the banana smoke from CT spawn, which blooms very fast, allows your B teammates to not have to waste the smoke, which is very important when playing B. Besides nade stacking to take care of the deep banana issue with the incendiary, if you get a chance to pick up a team Molotov, do so and give it to your banana player so that Molotov can cover both sides. That EF cliff was when Fury was on eco, so they didn't have any utility, gave EF free banana control. That usually never happens. You'll often be contested with utility. Banana control between both teams is all about trading nades and more importantly, knowing when to throw them to capitalize to push down. In a stand around, the first banana player is going to make their way towards sandbags and they're going to incinerate behind half wall. This player is usually the one that's going to be pushing down to clear both sides. But JL gets blind and he's just going to fall back here and you can see that he jumps around a lot so he can get a lot of info safely. Despite not taking banana control, Navi did get the frag nade onto Frozen who's the default T player on banana. He's not going to bother to push down to clear it because that smoke could be an issue. Instead, he's just going to jiggle peek safely from the top of banana. Alexis B is the second B player. He throws the deep banana smoke. And instead of throwing the incendiary right away, he's going to hold on to it until JL is ready to swing out. If Alexis B threw the incendiary right away, that would have gave time for Frozen to smoke it out. While if he waits for JL's timing to push down, JL could catch a timing onto Frozen who would have had his smoke out. Besides JL jump spotting, LXB also you saw likes to jump spot gets really easy info by doing so safely. Emma is an A player and he comes and helps out as the third B player by throwing flashes. So he has a flash setup for top banana in case face push up. Instead, he sets up to throw a deep banana flash off JL's call. At this point, Emma can go back towards A. However, his teammate needs help towards B. And you can see that he throws a nade, gets the fragment of Frozen, which pops up in the kill feed. FaZe instantly sees this and they try to go fast towards A, if you see from the minimap. He gets back to long very fast and he's going to punish Kerrigan for trying to go through that smoke. Later in the match, Navi run the same setup without Emma. You can see the incendiary being thrown from JL. Alexis B is going to wait to throw his and then JL is going to throw this flash. He's going to clear out the left side because usually when the T's throw their defensive smoke like this, they're towards the broom side. Before we move on, I had to tell you about my website CS2.app. It's one of the best educational websites out there. We have a nade directory here. Let's just say I want to learn how to throw CT smoke on Inferno. All I have to do is click on the map and there's a bunch of CT smokes here. There's also a POV demo directory. You can watch pro demos with ease. There's a pro tactic directory with over 200 strategies. We also have a team finder. So if you're looking for a team or you need players for your team, go ahead and use our website CS2.app. Now let's go ahead and look at how complex the take banana control. First off, we see Grim throwing a deep banana nade. He is going to wait for the T's car Molotov to end. He's gonna throw his own incendiary. And before that, JT threw incendiary at the beginning of the round. Then he's going to throw a flash and he's gonna come around that corner with his teammates, Elise's flash, and then they're going to clear the deep banana area. JT, the second B player, is going to Molotov behind half wall. And then here you can see that he's going to hold to see if any T's push up. He's going to smoke deep. He gets dropped in incendiary by Elise. And you're going to see he's jump spawning to see if anybody's logs. Doesn't see anybody logs. So he's going to choose to nade deep. And that nade actually helps out Grim because the T's threw a preemptive smoke to put out the CT's deep Molotov. And JT's deep nade was able to break open that smoke. It's a good thing that JT didn't throw the deep Molotov that was given to him by Elish because that would have gone to waste due to the T's throwing that smoke. 
And then here we have Leash here who went to support Nade early on. He's going to go in Graveyard. He's going to throw the Banana Flashes when Grim calls for them. Then rotates back to A. A couple of rounds later, Complexity run the same Banana Control setup. This time around, Aurora are going to throw a second card Molotov. And how Complexity are going to answer this is that they're going to put out this Molotov. And Grim is going to push down the same way he did previously. JT with Elysia's Molotov is going to throw the Log Molotov. I showed a couple rounds ago that he didn't, but this time he chooses to do so. Let's look at a normal round from Big Clan with 3B. Process the first player. So, gonna make his way towards Sandbags. He's gonna Molotov close, plays Anti Flash. Then he's going to Nate towards Broom. Once the car Molotov ends, he's going to push down with the cover of his teammates' flashes. You see the T's throw another Molotov which he is going to put out with his smoke. You saw Process checking left instantly when he pushed down because he knows Tapson's Molotoving off the right side broom. So what are we doing as the sole banana player? Let me explain. When you have banana control, this allows you to leave one player top banana to safely jiggle or jump spot while you send your other B player to stack towards A. If the T's retake banana, you would fall back as Major does here, putting up the smoke and waiting for your teammates to rotate in. But Fear are doing the retake rush strat, which Major tries to be sneaky around the smoke. However, Fear break it open and punish him. Process is left on top banana by himself, jiggle peeking and jump spotting car. So here we see Taps and the second B player is going to smoke deep and he also nades as well as timing the Molotov right when Process is about to push down and he's going to choose to Molotov the right side logs. You could also have an A player throw that smoke from CT spawn instead of having one of your B players do so. Searson, the third B player, is going to come over and he's going to drop an incendiary and he's going to be throwing these support flashes. So he's going to be on top of this wall here. He has a support flash for top banana in case the T's push up. Then he sets up for this banana flash process right when he's about to call for it, when he's going to push down, he's going to ask Searson for the flash. It's recommended that Searson has two flashes if you're going to be throwing flashes for your teammates. Once banana control is taken, he rotates back towards A. Fnatic used a similar banana control to Big Clan. So first off, Body is going to nade banana. Then he's going to time the smoke of the T's Molotov with the flash from his teammates as well as banana nades to push through. He pushes and clears banana, falls back, picks up the extra utility, re-smokes bottom banana, and then he's going to be jump spotting and jiggle peeking. You don't always need to Molotov up close half wall, especially if you know the T's are playing more bit passive. So you can save your incendiary because the flash that's thrown from his teammates will cover anyone behind half wall. Here we see Blame F throwing a deep smoke as well as Molotoving the right side pushes through the smoke to help contest banana then he's going to rotate out sometimes the t's are throwing the half wall smoke from t spawn which would waste your incendiary but here is the flash that matt throws that will cover anyone behind half wall as well as banana then he's going to rotate out towards a the next banana control ct setup that i'm going to show is bringing your a player over and having them throw nades early on over towards banana afterwards they're going to rotate back to a by doing so this could force the t banana default player to use up their utility Zataras did not throw any utility he is the contact player towards banana he is sandbag jiggle peeking and he's going to let major know when that fear of banana smoke is gone so they can go ahead and execute their banana control Zataras throws a deep molotov and nade jump spots and does not see anybody waits for major's flash and then pushes down to clear out the Left corner the benefits of waiting for that smoke to be gone is that you don't have to run through it as well as your utility is being used efficiently later in this video i will show you how to deal with the t's half wall banana smoke what's the negative to waiting for that banana smoke to fade let's just say you did have three towards b waiting for that smoke the t's can easily group up towards a and hit a with a five on two major here is at coffins is waiting for his entires to let him know when to throw the half wall molotov deep banana smoke as well as the banana flash afterwards he's going to meet up towards car where he can support Zentaris. Zentaris is going to drop him a smoke and he rotates out two player banana take from imperial so no way is going to nade deep then he's going to jiggle peek from top corner he doesn't see anybody and he is going to molotov towards the log side Vinny's going to break open the T's banana smoke. They don't see anybody and he's going to push down. A lot of action towards A, so he's going to gamble and go through the deep banana smoke to flank. I'm not going to show it, but Henny does throw the deep banana smoke. And here, Vinny is the other B player throwing the banana flash. I don't know if it was intentional or not that neither player's Molotov up close behind half wall. But the way that both players throw their Molotovs, one for the left side, one for the right side, 
seems like it was intentional. Maybe the Imperial players knew that Fnatic had a tendency to throw that banana smoke so they didn't want to waste a Molotov. Imperial knew that banana was clear without pushing down once they broke open that smoke thrown from the T's here because the Molotovs that they threw cleared out both the left and right side and they didn't hear any T's put out those Molotovs or swing out. Another way that you can take banana control is with your opera when they have the best spawn. We see Wrinkle do so here. He drops his nades and then he's going to smoke out the card Molotov. He posts this up on half wall. You can see the tease through the preemptive bottom banana smoke to put out any deep Molotov. Wrinkle gets the opening frag and he's actually going to rotate back to A. Rez, his teammate, is going to Molotov the right side logs. Then he's going to nade the broom side. Despite NIP getting the opening frag, they're not going to contest banana control. You can see the T is still holding towards the broom side. Instead, NIP are going to play the player advantage with Rez soloing B while all four players are towards A. Rez will play retake B and we see Alex here throwing the 146 banana flash. He comes and helps out if need be, but they don't need any help because his teammate Wrinkle is able to post up safely. So he is going to rotate back towards A. This is standard banana control on the CT side from Astralis, which in the pro scene usually requires three players. The first player, Yabby, is going to malt off behind half wall. He waits one and two seconds because of the nerf of the scenery where it doesn't last as long as the malt off. 90% of the rounds, you're going to face a car malt off thrown from the T's. You see he was about to put it out. However, he decides to wait and he's going to call for the flash from his teammate to push down. If Yabby threw the Molotov at the same time as the T's Molotov, then he would have to wait one to two extra seconds because the T Molotov would still be up. The other B player stare is going to throw a deep incendiary. Then he is going to jump spot to see if anyone towards banana and he is going to nade here towards the broom side off this right wall. And he's going to peek from Carr. Stare from Carr is going to be covering and supporting his teammate Yavi, who rushes down Banana. Usually, when Banana Control is taken, you're leaving that one player towards top Banana, and the other B player rotates A, stacking for A. But here is different. We see Astralis are going to set up with a three player Banana CT setup, and they're going to fight for the T's if they try to retake Banana. Stown, the third B player, comes over early on to Nate Banana, then he's going to set up for the deep Banana Flash and he is going to throw the flash when Yabby is going to call for it. Note how he has two flashes so the third B player should always have two flashes to support. Then he rotates and plays in front of half wall for that retake setup. Then device throws the deep smoke. Pain Gaming have a CT banana control where they bring two A players over to help throw HE nades on top of the two nades that were thrown from the B player so a total of four AG nades towards banana at the start and these nades are able to get one frag those players instantly rotate back to A because the T's will know that there's multiple players towards B because of the multiple nades as well as the kill feed this is the first time I've seen something done like this except for eco rounds you usually don't want to let the T's know that there's multiple players outside of your two B players so back in CSGO, you would sometimes see the two A players come over to throw HE nades, but your B players would not be throwing their HE nades. You saw Lux jump spot half walled and he doesn't see anybody, so he pushes down and clears down Banana. The two B players for Pain in the following round throw the standard nades, and they're actually not going to push down. We see Big Uzera get a frag through the smoke. They're actually going to set up on this top bottom stack towards the sandbags. This is a very strong CT setup for top Banana. T's coming around that half wall are going to be peeking into a double peak. Two player banana take, first player throws half wall Molotov, the second player throws a deep Molotov. We see the T's throw a half wall smoke, his teammate Big Zera is going to break open the smoke, he doesn't see anybody which allows him to push down. So I showed Pain Gaming's four player B banana take, here is Rooster's four player banana take where two of the A players come towards B early on and they throw banana default nades which consists of the two Molotovs, the deep banana smoke, and a flash. These nades will make it look like the B players are taking banana control. At the same time, if there were T's inside banana, that would have forced out their utility, so such as a smoke. And then the B players still have their full nades, so then they could re-execute the banana control. And now the T that was defaulting towards banana does not have a smoke, which is going to force that player to come out if they were there. So the B players don't throw anything early on and they wait and then they're going to re-execute the banana control with their default nades that they didn't use early on. Here Rooster are going to play for the retake, one up close towards the left side, one jiggle peeking from the top banana. So when you have one player jump spotting and jiggle peeking from top half wall banana, the T's might not expect anybody up close towards the brim or log side. 
Now let's look at some aggressive CT banana control where the first player is going to be rushing down with the support of the nades from their teammates. This push first starts around the deep banana smoke, stand behind the chair, aim here, then jump throw. Now DGT is actually going to come back towards B to support and he's going to do so by throwing a nade. You would prefer him to be there from the start and not throw the smoke and have one of the A players do instead. And that way he can throw the fallen flashes. He rotates back to A when banana control is taken. DGT could stay towards B and not rotate A if Max, the best spawn player here, rushes down and gets fragged. Max is going to throw the incendiary off that right wall which is going to land towards Broom. However, Blame F through a preemptive smoke. However, Max does win the duel, picks up Blame F smoke, smokes off deep banana, and then he's gonna fall back where he's going to be jump spotting half wall. Buddha is going to throw a flash off the wall that lands on the back, then he's going to fall with the HE nade for banana. Then he could have put out this car Molotov, but chooses not to. After the Molotov is gone, he's actually gonna go towards car here, and then he gets dropped another nade from his teammates, where he needs deep banana. And then he's going to cover his teammates as they fall back. I lied, Max is the one rotating out and Buddha is the one that is going to be jump spotting. Here is Fury's aggressive banana push. So Cello is going to smoke out the T's Molotov. He's going to run through the T's preemptive banana smoke. And then he's going to clear out the bottom of banana and then falls back after. Kiserato, who is the other B player, is going to Molotov the left side. So since his teammate here was able to smoke out the Molotov, he's able to get to car right away where he's going to spray the smoke and he's able to pick up two players. Spraying through the smoke is very efficient because of how narrow Banana is. Fallen is the third B player. He is going to be throwing the Fallen Banana flashes. You can see he has two flashes and then he rotates back towards A. Kai is going to smoke a bottom Banana from CT spawn. This is Astralis' aggro setup, which Stown is the best B spawn player. He's going to Molotov off Brum side, rushes down with the cover of the flashes thrown from his teammates, and then you have to be aware that the T's can flash through, which he was, and he's going to spray even if he was a little bit blind. Yabby, the second best B spawn player, is going to throw a flash that lands in between Brum as well as Logs. That's going to blind any T's there. He has a HE nade out just in case if the T's do push through, which does happen there. The nade does come in late. Since the T's through this smoke, you can see Yabby spraying through it. Then he's going to rotate towards A. Stare has the worst spawn. The third B player here is going to throw the banana flash at 146. Makes his way over where he has a HE nade out. In case Stown went down early on, he could have naded wherever the T was. If the T was towards logs or broom side, here he nades deep because... The T's were retaking into B with that flash, but Stown took care of him. Vitaly run the same tactic as Astralis. Flame Z with the best spawn is going to run down. You see the T's preemptive smoke there, and he's going to get flashed through by Apex. Flame Z didn't have a Molotov. If he did, he would Molotov the left or right side. Here's Apex throwing the same flash that I showed that Astralis was using. And they also paired up with a deep banana smoke from TT spawn thrown from Zaibu. And also someone is throwing the 146 banana flash. The next aggressive CT banana control setup involves three incendiaries where they're going to make a wall of fire from the broom log side all the way towards the top of T stairs. Two incendiary gets thrown from banana, one gets thrown from mid. Just be careful for the T smoking out the incendiary and then flashing the peak banana. Process is going to throw the middle incendiary, the one that lands between the one that's thrown from the mid player as well as this one shown in front. His objective is to push down and clear out banana, then he's going to smoke it off. He just needs to be careful towards that log side because Tabson's incendiary only covers towards the broom side. It will reach logs, but with the spread of the incendiary now being nerfed, it's not going to fully cover both sides. Searson, the third B player, is going to throw the banana flash. Then he makes his way up where he is going to support his teammates and he's going to nade T stairs here. Then he's going to go back and rotate towards A. JDC, the A player, is going to come over towards mid where he's going to throw the top stairs incendiary. Now you are the banana god. This guide focuses only on banana control. However, if you want me to break down on how pros hold the B-Site Inferno, give the video a like. If this video reaches 2,000 likes, I will make an in-depth guide on how to do so. And subscribe for more pro CS2 guides. And I'll see you all in the next one.